Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book Car Electrical and Electronic Systems. In today's video, I want to talk about switches and I want to talk about relays. Plenty of switches and relays in cars, relays under the bonnet, under the hood, to control radiator fan, to control headlights, all sorts of things. Relays inside the cabin that you can sometimes hear clicking. And of course, there are plenty of switches in a car. Switches that you operate to turn on and off the headlights, switches in the engine bay to operate the radiator fan, even switches that are buried inside the pillars that operate the interior light when you open and close the door. So switches come in all sorts of different types, but they really perform the same basic function. Inside any switch, there are contacts that open and close. The simplest switch has just two connections. Here is a battery isolation switch. We turn the battery isolation switch knob one way, we disconnect the battery. We turn it the other way, we connect the battery. And it has just those two terminals, those two connections. Inside, there are contacts that are either close or open. Now, that's the basics of any switch, contacts that open and close. That has just one set of contacts that opens and closes, but there are other switches that have multiple contacts that open and close. How can you tell? You can look at how many terminals are on the back of the switch. Here is a more complex switch. You can see instead of having two terminals, it's got six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This switches two different circuits has two sets of contacts, and in this particular switch, those two sets of contacts could go also in two different ways. So, this switch is a centre off, I push it down, we've turned on two circuits, I let go, we turn them off, I push it the other way, we turn on another two different sets of circuits. So, this sort of switch can be used if we have, say, electric windows, down, up. Okay, so different switches, different numbers of contacts. But you don't even have to be operating a switch manually. You can have something else operate a switch. This tiny switch is a pressure switch. It has only two connections, so we know it's just got terminals that open, connections that open and close. But instead of me turning a knob or operating a switch a toggle, this one is controlled by pressure. And in fact, this sort of switch you can use to monitor the pressure drop through your air filter. And when your air filter gets blocked, the switch contacts will close and turn on a warning light or a warning alarm. So switches open and close circuits, connect, disconnect circuits, and they come in different types. And here's a different switch again. This one is a push button switch. And the other part of the switch pops out when you push in the part to operate the switch. This particular switch has got four terminals on the back, so this switch can operate two different circuits. Now, if switches just simply turn on and off circuits, and no matter the, the, the type of switch, the complexity of the switch, that's all it's doing. It might be doing more than one circuit, but it's still just turning on and off circuits. What do relays do? Now here's where people think, oh, a relay, I understand switches, but relays are really complex. Now they're not, because all a relay is, is a switch, but the switch, instead of it being operated by me, is operated by an electromagnet. If we feed power to the electromagnet, it pulls the switch contacts across. It's as simple as that. Now, one type of relay, for example, this type, has got four connections. Two for the coil, the electromagnet that pull the contacts apart or across, and two for the electrical connections for the switch that's actually inside the relay. This relay has got another set of contacts. This relay is a changeover relay. It can connect one circuit and then change it to another circuit. So it's still got the two connections for the relay's coil, the electromagnet, but it's got three connections for the actual switch. Another type of relay, again, this has got three connections. Uh, it hasn't got just the normal two. That's because one of the connections is actually shared with the switch. So switches open and close circuits. They might open and close multiple circuits at once. Okay, not just one circuit, which would explain why they'd have more contacts. 
a relay opens and closes circuits. It's just like a switch, except it's done by an electromagnet that you feed power to when you want to operate the switch. Neither of them is really hard to understand. They're just opening and closing circuits, but you can have a lot of fun with relays and switches. You can do some really fantastic things. I'll give you an example. Once upon a time, I used three relays to disable the traction control on a car while still keeping the stability control working. Now, that sounds an incredibly complex thing to do, but it just was done with relays that switched circuits. Okay, so while we often think of relays as, oh, that's just the headlight relay or the horn relay, you can actually use relays to achieve some quite spectacular outcomes because you can switch multiple circuits at once. If you get a relay which has got multiple contacts, it allows you to switch multiple circuits and then you can start doing some really tricky things. So why it's easy to think, well, this is all rather basic, when you actually get very good at using these components, you can achieve quite spectacular outcomes. And of course, even when you're just doing maintenance and diagnosing faults, understanding what relays and switches are doing is an enormous help to you. Thank you.